I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll extend our playlist on factoring trinomials with a very beautiful example, and this time working on diamond and box method. Well, in this method, we have a couple of variations. One will include terms which will have a common factor. We'll also use trinomials where the coefficient is greater than one and also where the degrees are much higher. So with these variations, now let us try to understand how do we extend our diamond and box method to do factoring using this beautiful method. Before we begin, let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for their beautiful contributions as the questions come from you, suggestions come from you, and you have also been contributing to us so that we can reach millions absolutely free globally. As you know, we have been providing you services for the last 15 years. Now we have crossed 17,000 free videos and these are being watched over 80 countries. Resources are required to maintain this. Almost every day we are uploading a new video answering your questions. It is your channel. Try to make it successful by doing contributions. So those in Canada can do very easily with email transfer and elsewhere. You can send me an email to discuss the method of payment because we want your payments to be secure. Thanks for your contribution. Let's now begin with the set of questions at hand. So when we discuss this diamond and box method, we'll also share with you some tips which are going to help you understand how do we solve some difficult examples and why are we making mistakes and how can we avoid those mistakes. So let's begin with the very first question, which is 2x square minus 8x minus 24. Now, some of you who are experts in box and diamond method, they may start putting in the values and see what mistake they make, right? Ultimately, some of you might get this question wrong simply because of one common observation which is missed. And what is that? So, you notice here 2x square minus 8x minus 24. We have a common factor. Do you understand? We have a common factor. So, if you notice a common factor, then the strategy is to factor this out, right? So, group factor it. 2 is common as you can see. So, first you factor out 2. You are left with x square minus 4x minus 12. Now, apply the method, diamond and box method, to factor this trinomial. And this trinomial, as you can see, is with a coefficient a equals to 1 inside now, right? So, we can write down this factor as 2 times product of 2, right? Which we'll figure out from this particular method. So, if the coefficient is 1, how do we work? Let's look into this first, right? So, we have to do product, which is the product of leading coefficient and the constant term. In this case, it is minus 12. And the sum is minus 4. We are looking for two numbers to do this magic. We always look into the product first. Since there are very few combinations which will be the factors of the term, right, which is minus 12 in our case. To get minus 12, we could use 6 and 2, bigger number being negative, correct? Bigger number being negative makes sense, right? So we'll say minus 6 and plus 2, correct? So I'm writing plus and minus together so that it's very clear to you how the factors are formed, right? So now we got the product and sum. If the leading coefficient is 1, you can straight away write down the answer, right? So we get x minus 6 times x plus 2 as a result. You may not even go to the box 
was such an example. You get the idea. But now, let's try to understand the strategy clearly. Now, how do we use the box? So, we have actually used diamond and we have derived at the result. Very fast result, right? Now, let us see how do we use the box itself to derive at the result, right? That is the factor of this trinomial. So, now, we are looking at x square minus, we are looking at x square minus 4x. So, x square comes here. So, the leading coefficient is 1 here. So, we have, we'll put the leading term x square. Now, the second term is the constant which we are looking at, which is diagonally placed. So, minus 12 is diagonally placed. You get the idea, right? Now, we have to split minus 4 into this combination of m plus n, right? The sum was m plus n, correct? Which in our case is minus 6 and plus 2. So, that is how we get minus 4. So, we'll write this here as minus 6x and here we'll write as plus 2x. You get the idea. So, split the middle term, write them diagonally as shown here. So, once you place the terms, writing the leading term and the constant straight away and splitting the middle term into the sum, right, which gives you the same product, then you have to find the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor, whenever you are finding, you have to start with rows and columns, right, greatest common factor. So, I prefer to start with rows. So, in this row, x square plus 2x, x is the greatest common. The next one, we have minus 6, right? Now, if you look at the column, in that case, we get x as the common factor and here, you get 2 as the common factor. You can see very clearly, x minus 6 is the first factor, x plus 2 is the second factor. And since we had done the group factoring earlier, 2 comes outside. Now, if you do not do this group factoring, you will get a wrong result. So, I hope this concept is absolutely clear, right? So, I hope with the first example, you got the first tip, which is that you need to common factor, group common factor if there is one, right? And then do the needful. Let's move on to question number 2. Here, as you can see, we have a leading coefficient which is greater than 1 and we do not have any common factor. So, first thing is, you could put this number here, right? So, directly, we could put 15x squared and the constant term 2 diagonally. Well, what comes here is what makes the sum, right, of the product, right? That comes here. So, we cannot go directly there. We need to now work on the product. Product could be what? 15 times 2, which is 30, right? So, product is fixed as 30 to us. We really multiply A and C values, right? Leading coefficient and the constant term to get the product. Now, sum is required to be minus 13. How do we get the sum of minus 13 with a product of 30? So, clearly, both are negative numbers and both numbers could be minus 10 and minus 3. That gives us minus 13 and the product of 30. So, the value of m becomes minus 10, the value of n becomes minus 3. Makes sense. Now, these two which we have found are diagonally placed as minus 10x and minus 3x and that gives you minus 13x. Makes sense. So, now our box is complete. Once the box is complete, the next step is to find the greatest common factor. And to find greatest common factor, I'll prefer to go from rows. Well, you could go either way, but rows and columns, rows times columns will give us the answer. So, 15x squared and minus 3x gives us a common factor of 3x, right? The other row, minus 10x and 2. So, that gives us minus 2, right? So, that gives us our first factor, which is 3x minus 2. Make sense? So, we're done 
you can say one side of our rectangle is 3x minus 2, right? So that's the box and the area model, right? Now let's look into the column, which is 15x squared and minus 10x. So we have 5x as a common factor. So we get 5x here, right? And the other one is, is number minus 1, right? Because nothing is common and we want to keep x coefficient positive. That's the reason, right? So minus 1. So we get our factored form of this particular thing, right? You see how when the leading coefficient is not 1, we need to wait a bit. And then once the box model is complete, only then we have in a position to factor it. Is that clear to you? So we get 3x minus 2 times 5x minus 1 as our result. So I hope this process is absolutely clear. Well, in case you want to learn from me directly, send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Our students are right there on the top as their foundation and concepts are absolutely clear. Right. Now let's move on to the next question. The next question here is 9x squared plus 29x minus 28. Now, what is the product? Well, product is a big number. I have to multiply 9 with minus 28. You get the idea. That's a huge number. And the sum is 29. Sum is 29, right? How do we get this combination? It is not really easy to get this combination. Here is how you could do it. Well, we know minus 28 and 9 are the products. So let's do prime factorization of these numbers. You get the idea? So now 28 could be written as 4 times 7 is 28, right? 4 times 7. Now you see, we need a sum of 29. So that gives you an idea. You can combine 9 and 4, which is 36 and 7. That combination can give you the answer. Now, since the product is negative, one number is positive, the other one is negative. Bigger number has to be positive and the smaller number has to be negative. Makes sense. So, we have our split of sum, which is 36 and minus 7. You see how easy it became once we factored them rather than multiplying and getting stuck with a very big number. So, that is the second tip do factorization of the numbers itself. Okay, great. So we get the value of m as 36 and the value of n as minus 7. So I can write down these two, right, which is 36x and minus 7x. Makes sense. The other two are simple, copied from the question itself, diagonally place the leading term and the constant. And now we have to find the greatest common factor. So between 9x squared and minus 7x, x is the common factor. And between 36x and minus 28, we get 4 as the common factor. Correct? So the first term here is x plus 4. Makes sense, right? Now, let's look into the column. Column 9 and x are common for us. So that comes here. So, and on the next side, we have 7. Negative 7 is a common factor. Makes sense, correct? So we have completed the box by doing the group. Greatest common factors, we have got our factors also as shown here. Find it easy and good, right? This is a challenge question. Sometimes students get stuck. So, in really, in case you want to learn from me, send an email. We can help you to be on your success path. Now, this question, I've just shown you the solution right there, placing the values. If you would have multiplied, you would have landed up with minus 252. And the product of 29, getting this is extremely difficult. Let me tell you, right? It is extremely difficult. See how simple we made it using this technique of factoring the number. That is why I'm showing you the solution right here. Well, I took time to do it. But in test, it may be difficult to get the result. Perfect. Let's move on and take the next example. 
Now we are getting into the category when you land up with higher degrees. So here we have degree of 4, but don't worry, you see the relation, right? x to the power of 2 and x to the power of 4, right? So that means it's kind of same, you get the idea? Still, we can work with product and sum, product being minus 12 and the sum being minus 11. And that's simple, minus 12 minus 11 means bigger number is positive or bigger number is negative. So we are working in minus 12 and plus 1, correct? Let's put these numbers back here. We have x to the power of 4 and the constant minus 12. 11 x square has been placed as minus 12. We'll write x square now, right? And plus 1 x square. Clear? What is common between the first row? It is x square, which is common. So we'll write x square here. And the next one is minus 2, 12, right? So minus 12. So we'll write minus 12. Now let's look into the column, which is we have x square as a common factor, correct. And here we have 1 as the common factor. So x square plus 1. So we have factor. Do you see that? So degree 4, it is one and the same thing. Think like x square as p, right? You could think like this, right? p to the power of 2 minus 11p minus 12, where p is equal to x squared. Makes sense. So it is, in a way, a quadratic equation, a trinomial, and you can apply the same technique. So we have extended this technique when the degrees are higher, but make a note that these three terms will have the leading term as twice the degree of the second term. Great. Now, here is another example of higher degree. I'd like you to pause the video this time and then answer this question. Well, we have x to the power of 6 plus 5x cubed plus 6. Very simple. Since again, I could rewrite this as p square plus 5p plus 6, where p is equal to x cubed. You see that. So, it again becomes a trinomial, right? So let's apply the same technique. We are looking for a product of 6, sum for 5. And you know how do we get product of 6 with sum of 5? 3 times 2, right? So 3 and 2. So we can put this 3x cube, right? And 2x cube here. The leading term, which straight away copy, x and the constant, 6. Perfect. What is common between the first two? row, this row we started with greatest common factor is x cube. And the next one is 3. So we get our factor x cube plus 3. Is that clear to you? Next one, look at the column. x cube, right? So it's x cube, perfect. And here we have 2 as common, plus 2. So we get our factor x cube plus 3 times x cube plus 2. So with that, we have done this particular question also. Now here is another variation and that is, what happens when we have decimal numbers involved? Well, in case of a decimal numbers, I like you to factor out and make them as the natural numbers, right? I should say integers, okay, great. So what we can do here is that we can take a common factor of 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is 1 fourth, right? Think about it like this. This is actually one fourth of x squared, right? Minus half of x minus six, right? So if I factor out one fourth, what do I get? I get x squared right? minus two x, and this becomes minus twenty four. Makes sense. So I have factored out one fourth itself. Now we have x squared minus two x minus twenty four, and now we can apply the technique. Well, the product being minus 24 and the sum being minus 2, right? And the two numbers could be what? 6 and 4, right? So negative number bigger, positive smaller, so 6 and 4. Let's write down. So we are going to write down this portion in our box, correct? So we have x square here, correct? And the constant minus 24. And we have already split the product into the sum form, 
form which is minus 6x and 4x plus, right? So, what are the common factors? Well, x and here we have minus 6. So, we could write this as equal to x minus 6 and remember to write 1 fourth outside because that was factored out, right? And now in the column, we have x, correct? And we have 4 plus 4, correct? So, we have x plus 4 and that is how we could factor this also. Amazing, right? So, it doesn't matter even if you have decimals or fractions for that matter, right? You see, I wrote it in the form of the fractions. Just factor it out and then work on this beautiful method of diamond and box. So, with that, we have actually completed the solution of all the six questions at hand. And with that, you have learned few tips. One of them is group factoring. The second one is always to common factor even if there are decimals and uh, fractions and the third one is prime factorization right that helps i hope it makes a lot of sense feel free to write a comment share your views and keep contributing as we want to reach millions thanks for your time and all the best